Hello and welcome back. In this session today, we're going to look at Amazon Codecast that is possibilities to define workflows. Um, and it's going to be the first session around workflows. And I believe that I will need more sessions to explain all of the details on workflows. Uh, why? Workflows are really important from my perspective for every software project. Um, as in uh, our scenario, they define um, the CICD processes that we want to um, achieve. As I've already explained in a few other videos, for me, CICD is really the key to be successful with your software project because you want to be able to bring all of your development uh, value that you're adding to the production environment within minutes. And for that, all of the pieces uh, need to be automated. Code Catalyst offers a, a possibility to um, execute these workflows directly within the environment and within the system. And that's what we're going to briefly look at today. Um, so if you remember, we have this uh, project which uh, we created in the other videos uh, around the Code Cutters introduction, which uses the blueprint for a single page application. And this also comes with uh, two different workflows right out of the box. Um, the workflows can be made visible in the CICD section um, of uh, Code Catalyst. Um, as you can see, uh, this um, project now comes with two different um, workflows out of the box. The first one is uh, named on pull request build and test. Uh, the second one is on push uh, to main deploy pipeline. Uh, what does this actually mean? Let's have a look right before actually looking into where and how workflows are stored. This one, um, as you can see, um, has three stages. First one is the workflow source, then it has a build and a test stage. Uh, the other workflow that we just saw um, and we'll have the deploy stage as well. So it will also push uh, stuff to the um, actual environment to the deployments. And uh, this is still a pretty basic uh, deployment, right? So you can see that this one is going to uh, do a CDK bootstrap. It's going to then build and, uh, build and test uh, the CDK code, and it's then going to deploy the code out to environment. Still pretty basic, right? This is not very sophisticated. Um, I still want to look at uh, the definition uh, for this one. Um, as you can see, uh, the definition um, can be visualized on the one side, and on the other side, there is a, a YAML uh, documentation or a YAML, YAML implementation of this. And this is pretty cool because this allows you also to define your workflows within um, with, with code, uh, which is uh, obviously what you uh, might want to do as well going forward. Um, if you want to see these workflows in your source code. So these workflows are stored within your source code itself. So if you look into the uh, source repository that we that we have for this project, uh, you will see that there is a dot code catalyst um, folder. Uh, within that, uh, you will have the YAML files uh, the, to do the deployments. And it, it is um, up to you to decide whether you want to uh, do the changes directly in the YAML. Um, or whether you want to use the visual editor to do uh, workflow changes over here. This is not only um, what I like about workflows, right? Uh, the possibility um, for using GitHub Actions is something that I believe is going to really change the way that we um, we built um, CI/CD pipelines over here. Um, I have a project where I'm actually using that. Um, so let's have a short look. Um, I think um, we could we could look at this one um, where you will see that um, I am actually for one of the projects that I'm doing um, with another community builder or Christian, uh, we are using um, Flutter to do deployments, right? And there is no a natively built in um, functionality to do Flutter deployments, um, but uh, within Core Catalyst. Uh, but you have the possibility to um, include um, GitHub Actions, right? And that's what I'm doing here. I'm using an existing action uh, to uh, do some Flutter deployments and Flutter executions. As you can see, you can always switch between visual and YAML. Um, look, um, when you want to look at the workflows, this one is a little bit more sophisticated than the initial one, but it is, at the end, the, the context is the same. Let's go back to the uh, to the other project, right? So to our initial project, um, we had this code cutlass introduction uh, thing, um, and um, now let's try to define a workflow from scratch. Um, so uh, as we saw, 
um, we can create a workflow over here. Um, I told you we have the possibility to have a, a YAML editor, uh, or we can also use the visual editor. Uh, in both uh, things, we uh, can use um, the Actions button to select an existing Code Catalyst action. Um, so uh, this has some out-of-the-box things like build and test. Um, then we have um, execution of a task definition, um, deployment of CloudFormation stack, uh, deployment to ECS, um, CDK deployment, um, publishing to S3 um, is something that you would want to use. And then they also have possibility to include MENT um, for software composite analysis, uh, composition analysis. But you also have the possibility to switch over here to GitHub Actions. Uh, and that opens up your way to a lot of other things, right? So there is so-called um, cleaned up or suffix is already tested GitHub Actions, uh, which you can directly find here. So as an example, you can get uh, YQ, you can get a GitHub script, you can uh, use uh, execute SSH commands or something like that. But there's also the possibility to include any kind of GitHub action that you have been using before. Um, by uh, just choosing the GitHub Actions over here, right? And then you can uh, define uh, the action that you want to execute uh, within the uh, GitHub Actions YAML, right? And this is really pretty neat because it opens up the way to uh, do any kind of uh, cool thing within your workflow that you actually want to do. Cool. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think um, this is a very brief introduction um, into this. Uh, let's have a little bit of a more um, sophisticated um, overview. So uh, there is a DevOps pipeline uh, reference architecture that uh, that um, AWS has been announcing, right? And there is also a blueprint for that. Uh, as a preparation for this, I've been uh, creating this project already, so we can have a look on it, and you will see that this pipeline is going to be very much sophisticated. Um, it has uh, the possibility to um, execute deployments across multiple stages. Um, you will see that here uh, in a second. I've just started that, um, so it is still running. Uh, but you will see that this will first do a build. Uh, then it will do a beta deployment to a so-called beta phase. Uh, then it will move over to a gamma deployment to two different regions. Uh, then it will do a deployment to the production environment also to two different regions. Um, and this is all configured in YAML as well. So you will see the definition of this one uh, over here. Um, and you can you can expand that, of course, right? And this is where I think that uh, the blueprints combined with the workflows are really going to change the way that we do CI/CD, um, because uh, we can create pipelines or CI/CD workflows that are then going to be shared as blueprints with other parts uh, of the community uh, and with uh, people like you who want to start your own workflow, right? We don't. Previously, if you wanted to um, get something this sophisticated in a pipeline. It took you days, right, uh, or even longer. Now, with the blueprints, you can directly get started by just reusing existing workflows that are already there. And this is what I hope also to reach with my series around how builders do CICD. I want to talk broader and talk more detailed around how do we as a community do, do and develop our CICD pipelines as we all talk about DevOps or DevSecOps, right? We want to shift left all of the security tooling and security scanning, but we don't see that in the wild. The most of the uh, of the open source pipelines really just have a build, test, and deploy stage, um, and we need to get better as, at that. And um, I hope that um, I will be able to use the Code Catalyst workflows to uh, share some of my knowledge with you and also share some of my experiences with building CI/CD pipelines with you. So that's it as a short introduction into workflows. Um, we're going to look at more details and I'm going to walk you through some of the configuration options uh, going forward uh, in, in follow-up um, you know, follow videos that I'm going to create. So thanks a lot for watching. Um, if you have any uh, specific thing in workflows that you would like to look at, please let me know. And um, yeah, looking forward to see you back again soon. Bye-bye.